guys welcome to geo motsoku in today's video we are covering the topic of peg winds now peg winds are defined as hot dry winds which blow from the interior towards the coastal areas or you can say they are hot dry winds which blow from the kalahari high towards the coastal low from the kalahari high towards the coastal low now let's this takes you back to grade 11 pressure gradient force right the force which describes the rate of change and direction of winds as they blow from a high pressure towards a low pressure high pressure towards a low pressure winds will always blow from a high pressure towards a low pressure now we get bad winds in winter in winter remember in winter we have cold air and you know what cold air sinks it sinks subsides or descends right forming a high pressure over the land can you see we have a high pressure over the land like in winter we have a dominant high pressure over the land and this high pressure is known as the kalahari high or the continental high this high pressure cell is the same as this one this is south africa from the top view this is showing south africa from the top view and this is a cross section we have cut through south africa we came up with the cross section this part above this shading here is black shading this part is the plateau the elevated flat land or flat area this is the plateau this is the plateau this side is the escarpment. I have my escarpment on, escarpment on this side, right? So this is the top view of South Africa, and this is the cross section because they can represent peg with using either this diagram or this one. Just know that this shaded part above it is my plateau. It is the plateau. Then on this side is my escarpment. It is my escarpment. On the interior, and my Kalahari high is the Kalahari high. And then this is the escarpment leading up to my coastal low. This is the coastal low. Coastal low, coastal low. Kalahari high, Kalahari high. Remember, the Kalahari high is also known as the continental high. And if you look at my arrows, my arrows are going from a high towards a low. From a high towards a low. Because winds will always blow from a high pressure towards a low pressure. Okay, number one, bad winds okay in winter. Right? In order to get bad winds, we need the presence of two things. The, pres the presence of a Kalahari high and a coastal low. A Kalahari high and a coastal low in winter. Right? That's why. Remember, when there's a high pressure, the air is sinking or it is descending. Here's the air sinking above the plateau. The air is sinking and then it's going to diverge at the surface. It's going to diverge at the surface. Can you see? It sinks and then it diverges going towards the coastal low, right? It goes towards the coastal low. And one thing you must know about the high pressure in the southern hemisphere is that the air circulation is anti-clockwise. The air circulation is anti-clockwise. Look at the direction of the arrows. They're going in an anti-clockwise direction because it's a high pressure. In the southern hemisphere, air circulation for a high pressure is anti-clockwise. But the air circulation for a low pressure is clockwise, right? High pressure, anti-clockwise. Low pressure, clockwise, right? You can see that my air here is circulating in an anti-clockwise direction. And then it diverges towards the low pressure. It diverges towards the low pressure. Now, as this cold air diverges from the plateau towards the low pressure, it descends the escarpment. It descends the escarpment. This is the east of South Africa, so this is representing the Drakensberg escarpment. The Drakensberg escarpment, right? As this cold air from the interior, or cold wind blowing from the interior towards the coastal low, as it descends the escarpment, it is heated up or it is warmed up it is let's say it is heated up it is heated or warmed up at a dry adiabatic lapse rate dry adiabatic lapse rate of one degrees of one degree celsius for every 100 meters which means that as it goes down for 100 meters it, it is heated by one degree celsius 
as it goes down by over 100 meters it is heated again by one degree celsius by the time it reaches the coast it will get there as hot dry winds right as hot dry winds remember this wind which sunk on the interior right it was cold since it is winter right? it was cold and dry but as it descends the escarpment it is heated up or it is warmed up at a dry adiabatic lapse rate of one degree celsius for every hundred meters by the time it gets to the coast it is going to be hot dry winds known as the berg winds they are known as berg winds because they, they happen where there are mountains berg the word berg is an african african's word for mountain right i'm sure you remember phone winds from grade 11 it's the same type of wind right uh the mid latitude cyclone and big winds are closely related because the presence of a mid latitude cyclone creates the conditions which are necessary for big winds right so when a mid latitude cyclone approaches it creates a low pressure it creates a low pressure and we know that for big winds to occur we need the high pressure over the land and the low pressure over the ocean so as it, as it approaches it creates a low pressure over the land right and then our winds will blow from the high pressure towards a low pressure right but by the time it arrives by the time the cold front arrives it is going to change the weather right remember our big winds were hot dry winds but by the time it arrives it's going to change it to cool and moist weather conditions right with more rainfall but as it approaches it creates a low pressure over the ocean by the time it arrives it is going to change the weather right from hot dry winds to much cooler moist weather conditions and more rainfall right we need to understand that those two right it creates the favorable conditions for a bad wind as it approaches right as it approaches it creates a low pressure system right Yes, supporting the formation of a big wind. But when it arrives now, it changes the weather from those hot dry winds. It, re it replaces the big winds, right? With, with much cooler and moist air, forming more rainfall, right? So having big winds can be an indication that a cold front or a mid latitude cyclone is approaching, right? So big winds can be an indication that the mid latitude cyclone is approaching because as it approaches, it creates a low pressure over the ocean, right? Which is favorable for bear winds to develop. But when it arrives, it changes. It replaces those bear winds with much cooler, moist air and therefore heavy rainfall, right? Yes, these are some of the impacts of bear winds. Number one, it can lead to wildfires. This, this is an uncontrollable fire which spreads across forests, right? Especially in uh, dry areas. They can lead to health issues such as dehydration and respiratory problems, especially for people with asthma. Uh, they, can lead, they can lead to crops drying out. Remember, they are hot, dry winds, right? So crops can dry out, can cause fatigue, especially amongst old people, right? Uh, animal heritage are going to be destroyed. Remember, there's forest fires, right? There's wildfires which can destroy animal habitats. There is heat stress and discomfort. They can ask you for what? If, what are they asking for? Economic impacts for economic you know that your answer should be dealing with money right remember i said crops are going to dry out which means farmers are going to make less profits you see that that's an economic reason right there right there's more fatigue if there's more fatigue it means the workers are now tired there will be less production that's an economic reason as well there's less production if there's less production obviously there'll be less crops to sell right since there's less production, there will be less trade. Less uh, farmers may lose their jobs. A job is also an economic reason. You see that? If more and more farmers, more and more people lose their jobs because of these wildfires, there will be less people who are contributing towards tax. Right? So those are some of the economic reasons right? coming up from my head. Uh, let's say they ask you about uh, environmental reasons. Environmental reasons. Remember, this uh big winds lead to wildfires right drying out the vegetation right number one vegetation is going to be dry and it's going to be burnt out number two can lead to more erosion animal habitats are destroyed that's an environmental reason as well right environmental natural or physical reason 
animal habitats are going to be destroyed. That's environmental as well. The temperature, what about the temperature? Temperatures are going to be higher. Temperature, you can put that answer under environmental. Temperatures are going to be higher because they are hot, dry winds, right? You see, those are some of the environmental factors or reasons you can give us or environmental impacts. Uh, if they ask you for social impact, social relates to us, relates to people, right? Remember, we mentioned heat, stress, and discomfort. That's affecting people. It's a social factor. Heat, stress, and discomfort. It causes more fatigue. What about dehydration? Health issues such as uh, dehydration and respiratory problems such as asthma. Those are social because they relate to people, right? So these are my impacts. But if the question is asking you for social economic or environmental impacts you will just walk around them right social remember it relates to people uh, economic anything related to money talk about job losses right talk about gdp talk about economic growth talk about production there's going to be a decrease in production talk about farmers losing their jobs jobs is an economic reason when they say environmental i think about the natural and physical environment right Vegetation is going to be burnt out, the crops are going to be done. Uh, what else? There's going to be a rise in temperature.